All right, it's day 83, and I've been very negligent in my duties with regards to changing the hydrogen peroxide every few days. There used to be a time in the beginning of this project wherein I would change the hydrogen peroxide every three days, and nowadays it's closer to every week and a half or two weeks. And for this PC group, you know, it smells a little bit bad, but, you know, not too bad because the Hydrogen peroxide sits there for so long it loses its potency. And for this other group that gets a lot of natural light and lamp light as well, um, you know, it doesn't have that bad smell. Maybe a little bit, but there is a strong medicinal smell to this group, which makes it more promising. This is the PC group, and in the center you can see a seed where the embryo sort of sticks out between the seed husks. Seed husks are all sort of a light yellow in this group. I'm not sure whether they can decay fast enough to match the seed growth because in nature there are freeze thaw cycles every day. And likewise for the seed over here, um, it sort of has the embryo sticking out too and the seed husks are sort of somewhat parted. So I think if anything happens, those two are going to be the ones to go first. And there's also this other phenomenon of some seeds floating and others not. So I'll talk more about that later. One of my viewers mentioned that he's going to give American ginseng growing a go. He lives in the American South and says that, you know, 10 to 15 year old ginseng roots can fetch up to $1,000 per pound. And that's just phenomenal. I had heard the figure $500 per pound thinking that was already incredible. But 1000 per pound makes it truly profitable. So, you know, if any of you have a plot of forest land, in an area of the country where the climate is suitable for this plant then you might want to give it a go as a retirement plant and just plant as many seeds sow them all over the forest you know one on each square foot and see what happens you know 10 15 years down the road over here we're looking at the sunlight group and that seed in the middle and the one on the left you know i think those two are the most promising here so some of these are developing at different rates. Those two don't look like they're going to go anywhere. Um, you know, even though the seed husks seem to have split open at some point. And there's one that's kind of floating. Uh, I don't think that's going to do well. It's small too. So that one and that one are what look to be the first movers, if anything's going to happen in this group. But there are two others here. Uh, top and bottom the same sort of promising as well. If you compare the two groups, the PC seeds look smaller than those in the sunlight group. So I don't know if anything's conclusive or was that just by random. For the dirt group, I put plastic wrap over this because the top was drying out really fast every time. And also I had this huge fungus gnat problem. So I had to make sure that fungus gnats weren't breeding in here somehow. And just by smell alone, I can tell I have a huge problem. So when I watered a lot, the sphagnum peat moss would float to the top. And that's what started molding over after I put plastic wrap over it. So I hope this dirt group isn't a lost cause with all that mold and sometimes drying out. I've been very negligent in taking care of these seeds. But for now, I'm just going to spray some hydrogen peroxide on the fuzzy mold. And I'll take the plastic wrap off for a few days and see if that helps just kill the mold and then I can think about other options. I'm thinking about transplanting this to another medium to save these seeds. So I haven't given up hope completely on this yet but it's not looking good for this group. Why does American ginseng command such a high value on the open market? Well it's related to Panax ginseng or Chinese ginseng and they both have ginsenocides, this class of compounds that have supposed medicinal properties as adaptogens. Adaptogens are best described as medicine for healthy people. People take adaptogens in the belief that it'll prevent them from getting diseases or if they're already sick it'll shorten the duration and accelerate the path back to homeostasis. What I'm showing you here is one of these cheapo reflector clamp lamps that you can buy online for much less than ten dollars and made of aluminum basically you'll screw in your favorite light bulb I have an LED light that gives off 1080 lumens at the present and here's the box 
I bought these on Amazon.com. So these use up 12 watts but give off 1080 lumens. That's better than the previous bulb I was using which was for ginger mostly. That one used 13 watts and gave off 850 lumens. So I think this one will serve me well. Uh, coloration is a little bit more yellow. As you can see for this sunlight group there's a seed that looks like it's shooting out a root system but I don't really think that's it. Uh, well I'll just have to wait and see. Yeah it's kind of flaking off. So the other issue here is nine of the seeds sink when I pull the water and two float. And now the two that float, you know, one looks like it's molding internally. And I think that just got worse because I didn't change the hydrogen peroxide for like two weeks. I once saw on an internet message board that seeds that float are not viable. So I'm not 100% sold on that, but I believe there might be some truth to that. Let's check out the PC group. So as you can see, not all that much has changed. I mean, the ones that look like they're about to germinate and shoot out a root system still are, maybe a little bit more so in their progress. But when you pull the water like this, it's more disturbing. Only five of them sink, and six of them are floaters. So that kind of suggests that these conditions are not as good. It's warmer conditions, and, you know, there's no light. So... I think there may be some truth to that whole, you know, floating versus sinking thing. And the fact that this one never had a strong medicinal smell means that perhaps just not as many of these seeds are viable. And those that are, are probably not in a good spot to be germinating anytime soon. But, you know, at this point, there's really very little information to go on. So it took me a super long time to get my act together, but I finally dug up those seeds trapped beneath the moldy mixture of sand and sphagnum peat moss with a little bit of diatomaceous earth mixed in. You know, it did its job in preventing fungus gnats from, you know, gaining a foothold, but at the same time, it didn't stop mold from gaining ground. So that sphagnum peat moss really sucks in water and holds it in forever, maybe even more so than uh, the wood chips that comprise potting mix. But yeah, these things have gone back to their default state. They look like they just came in through the mail. They're all dried up and earthy colored. And, you know, you can see the places at which the embryo is somewhat exposed. And there's a crack in the seed husk. They sort of look like little sandwiches or cookies. Over here, I have a clean bottle cap filled with clean water. And I'm going to try to rehydrate the seven seeds that I recovered from that customized potting mix that I just showed you. So I was amazed that I was able to recover all seven because they're so well camouflaged once they're in any kind of dirt or growth medium. And I lost two from the original nine when I transplanted from potting mix to the mix I just described that has sand and sphagnum peat moss, diatomaceous earth. So that's not too bad, but the bigger picture is I'm worried about whether these seeds are still viable at all because they've been through a lot. They've dried out a few times and growth conditions weren't good at all. There was a lot of mold. Okay, it's day 103. And out of the seven seeds that I soaked in water 24 hours ago uh, from this recovered dirt group, only two have sunk to the bottom. And one is very thin and disc-shaped. It required a lot of shaking to get to the bottom. And the one I consider viable and legit is the one in the center right here. It's the most round. It's the thickest. It looks like something that's actually in the process of germinating. So all of these seeds have been through many dry out cycles. And they've been attacked by mold, no doubt, in the last transplant. So I think there is a lot of merit to that theory that the viable ones sink and the non-viable ones float. So I finally got around to going outside and digging up some actual dirt. Not potting mix, not sphagnum peat moss, but real rich California dirt. And it has this reddish hue. These are the larger particulates that made it through the strainer. There were a lot of rocks, straw, um, twigs, leaves, things like that that had to be filtered out. But the majority was nice, fine particulates. So I planted the seven seeds from the dirt group. And I used a black permanent marker to 
draw dots on the outside of the glass to signify where the seeds are so I know the positions of the seeds if I lose track later because these things camouflage very well with dirt. So I've already started to water. I think this will get absorbed by the surrounding bone dry soil um, within a matter of hours and then I'll have to spray and water some more. I don't want to pour because that would disturb everything and the air would try to rush out from the bottom and the air bubbles would turn everything upside down. So I want to avoid that. But I think this is a great environment. It'll get light, it'll get the right amount of moisture, and we can see what's going on. So if this doesn't work, and I have good reason to worry because I think maybe only one of these seeds is viable, and I'm not sure about the other two groups at this point either. So I do have a backup plan, and you'll have to stay tuned to find out what that is in episode four.